Hello everyone. Thank you for to those who are tuning in live. You get to spend your Colorado time morning with us wherever you are, obviously different time zone. Or you're from the future watching the recording, which we love because that boosts our YouTube numbers. We're trying to get more subscribers. So for those watching the recording, thank you also. Today we're going to go through the title of the webinar is what happens to your visual report when you bring your model into new versions featuring layers. That's quite a mouthful for a title. I honestly don't know why I chose a longer title. I guess it's because I thought it needs better content. Really, the title is more like your visual report has changed to workspace layers. Because in order for me to talk about what happens to your old visual reports, I have to first tell you what layers are and give you an intro. So today's agenda, we are going to uh, go through an overview of layers in our software, which is a new feature to watch out for. It is a major new feature, which is why we're doing a whole webinar just dedicated to that. And we did a previous one also dedicated to it. And then we'll, there will pro probably be more in the future too for those watching the recording. Then we're gonna go through an example of what it looks like in the software I'm gonna go through it is for certain going to feel like drinking from a fire hose or fire hydrant, but this is going to be a good reference and I have a little caution next. Okay, so then we're going to go through an example of what happens when you bring in an old file into a new version. So the warning is there's a lot to go through. Okay, we're going to move quickly. You're going to see me do things and wonder how did you do that? That's what the recording is for. So either those watching the recording, or those watching live and you would get the recording later, you can go through and kind of pause and see what I did if you're, if you're curious. So it's a good reference, but it is far from a comprehensive tutorial. So what I say is you should use our resources like this or our help guide or whatever, but for you to really understand, especially this feature, you have to play with it. That is the best thing you can do, but this will be a good intro. And by the way, you don't have this feature yet for those watching live, but it is coming out soon. Okay, so what are layers? Well, maybe let's talk about things that have layers. Onions have layers, cakes have layers, AFT software has layers. What's not to get? So things have uh, layers, obviously just a joke here, but the idea is in reality, what our software is doing is like setting a set of Oops, let's do this. A set of transparencies on top of one another. So the idea is very much like layers in other software such as Microsoft products like PowerPoint. You may have used layers there where you have an image and you need to put that image behind some text box or an arrow or something like that. So there's an order to how things are shown to the user, but that's the important thing to understand is it's all about the visual side. It's about showing, not what is actually there and that calculations we're doing. It's just about showing things. So you have this, what we call this all objects layer. It's like the base layer, it's the, the foundation. And then you can have other layers on top of it. So for this example, we have workspace symbols, meaning when you have things on your workspace that have like extra color, usually it's red by default, like an ampersand, which represents fittings and losses in a pipe, or a closed valve has an X next to it, that could be one layer. Another layer could be the object number. So, you know, when you make a model, you have P1, P2, what have you, that could be another layer. Then you have another layer of output. This one and the color maps are probably the two most uh useful and unique things to layers because this when you show output on your workspace that used to be done in visual report now visual report is gone so how can i represent that visual report br is gone okay but that's okay because we have now layers to come in and help us so that is really uh, the kind of the crux is showing your output on the model within the workspace. 
So this is all customizable. You don't have to do symbols as its own or object numbers as its own or flow and pressure as its own. You can, these could be all one layer, let's say. And then color maps is, if you've ever used those in visual report, the idea is we color the pipes based on the values of a parameter. So for example, in this case, this might be flow rate where super high flow rates have a green color and then lower flow rates have a blue color and so on and so on. And that's customizable with your own thresholds for colors and whatnot. Now, you may wonder, how do you make all of these? Don't worry about that yet. I just want to get the idea across. So when you make layers, what that means is you can show them all together, which is what it looks like when you do that here. Or you can turn some of them off. Like if we turn off the color map, then the colors go away. Or if we turn off symbols, then the symbols go away. And it's a quick way to show only what you want to see. And again, because it's completely customizable, uh, you can have as many layers or as few as you would like. Okay, so that's just the basic idea. It is all accessed in the quick access panel or the CAP, as the kids call it, the QAP, where you have these tabs down in the bottom that list off your scenario manager, the properties. If you uh, click on a junction or so, it will show you the input and output. And then now layers is the new tab down here. So this is in the bottom right of your software. And this is the only area that's new relating to uh, work, or like this is where you do things when it relates, when you're trying to do things related to layers. Everything is done in here. Now, there's a lot going on with it, okay? So, my suggestion is to approach it section by section. What that means is first we go into layers, so we want to make these sort of transparencies, okay? Then let's look at this section. This is a section that lists all of my layers. So if we just walk through a couple, we have the all objects layer. That is my most, that is my foundational layer. That is the base layer that everything is drawn on. This is like the normal workspace you are used to, is the all objects layer. This is a limited, or the edits on this layer are very limited because we have to show we have to have a layer where everything is drawn. You can turn it on or off, but everything has to be able to be drawn on it, okay? But then you have all of these up here, which are all custom layers. And for example, then we have that symbols layer where if we show this layer, now our workspace symbols, again, the ampersands or the Xs or the little red letters that show up in your model, that is what's shown in this layer. If we go look at this layer, flow and pressure labels, this is your flow, your volumetric flow rate, and your pressure output associated with each pipe on the workspace as a label. We can, again, toggle them on and off. But that's the idea is you have several layers that one, uh, sorry, there are standard layers which are always, uh, there are layers that you can have multiple on at the same time. Color layers is another section of the layers, which is very special where you can't have multiple showing, but I have a slide on that, so don't worry. Again, the idea is we just wanna take it sec section by section. So when you open software containing layers, you will not see all of these things. You will only see all objects layer, but I want you to keep in mind that this is what it would look like if you add layers. Okay, then the next section is up here, presets, which is a whole thing that we will uh, get into, but essentially you are saving the combination of layers that you want. So that's section by section. Now, my second piece of advice is keep it simple to begin. Keep it simple, silly, K-I-S-S. -S. No need to overcomplicate, especially on such a new uh, feature. This thing, this point is pretty major. Our goal was to make this as intuitive as possible to learn on your own. And I believe we did a very good job because even though I work here, 
I had very, very little involvement in the development of layers. Other than at the very, very beginning, a long time ago, when we started talking about, I gave some maybe ideas on, on what kinds of things would be interesting. But when it came to execution, I was not involved. So I came into this feature just like you all would have as a completely new user, kind of lost, you know, what do I do? And I was able to figure it out following these steps, you know, take it section by section, keeping it simple, and then also making use of tool tips. So I didn't have anybody show me or read any documentation. I just use what is natively in the software. The tool tips are these little question marks here. If you hover over them, things pop up and they give you a little quick explanation of stuff. They're actually really useful. So if I can learn it without much guidance, then certainly you can too. Uh, we obviously will give you resources. I don't want you to just jump in blind, but I was trying to do that as a test to see how intuitive it is. So just don't be overwhelmed with what's going on. Remember, the idea is we just want to show different things on the workspace. Now, there's a lot you can do with it, so there's way too many iterations of things for me to show you. Oh, this could be one route or what have you. We're just going to go through some examples. All right, now this section is something I didn't talk about quite yet, which are the eyeballs, the all-seeing eyes. A, S, E. So these are the toggle points to whether you're showing the layer or not. So if you see that they're grayed out, it means in this case, the color maps are not showing. If you click the eye and it shows an eyeball, then it will show. And of course, the order of layers matter. So the if you have the color map on, then that color map will take precedence over any other colored pipes you have defined in a lower layer. So there's an order to these transparencies, but that is done with the eyeballs as you turn them on or off. We call this showing or hiding. Show, hide. Okay. Oh. And in order now you say, okay, cool. You got all these layers. How did you actually like how did I tell it? to be my flow and pressure results. Well, that's where the settings come in. So over here, you can't see it, but you can use your imagination. If you hover over it, there's a little gear icon, which would be the settings icon. Or you can double click on the, the, uh, the layer and you will get into a window that looks like this, which is layer settings. This is where you define everything. So when I say layers are fun, but they're meant to be purposeful. So your job is to give purpose to your layer. And you do that by configuring its settings. So there are a bunch of settings. This is where it becomes, uh, again, that's so customizable that it's not easy to just tell you this is exactly what you should do. But the idea is you have a section here of whether, first decide whether you're gonna show the pipe and junction or not. So we have this section, pipes and junctions, and you're showing your height. Okay, so in this rectangle, we have our pipes, every pipe you have, and you can toggle them on or off to show in that layer. Then over here, you have your junction section, which again, you can toggle on and off to show in your layer. That's, you might say, well, that doesn't look like the only thing you can do, and you'd be correct, because you can also change the colors of things within the layer, or the thickness of the pipe, or you know the equivalents that apply to junctions. So if you have ever played with colors inside the software, just, you know, for let's, let's do an example of a, a chilled water system where you have your cold supply and your hot return. You might have your cold supply be blue and your hot return be red. That used to be done inside of the pipes. Now that is done inside of layers. That's important to understand. We, we wrapped up the colors and all, all of the uh, other like size settings into layers. I obviously can't hear you all, but I hear every I'm pretending everyone says yes, makes sense. Good. If it doesn't make sense, please ask questions. I have somebody here to answer them uh, via text, not texting like on a cell phone, but you know, uh, they'll reply to your question that you type in. And then if it's a seemingly really relevant question, then I'll, I'll answer it live as well. Okay. Now, the next section of the settings is going to be label control. This is 
Now, so the first one is whether the pipes or junctions will show. This one is now about what parameters and what things do you want to associate with those pipes and junctions. This is very similar to visual report in idea. Execution's a little different, but the idea is, in this example, we have our valve summary parameters. So valves have a CV, yes, usually. Okay, they also could have an open percentage or a flow rate, and you can add those to your list of parameters that you want to display on your workspace. And that's what we have here. Now, it can be a little tricky to see because these are grayed out and the image I have is not the highest of resolution. So thank you for bearing with me. But it's grayed out because there's no output yet. So this is just uh, a screenshot to kind of show you the most chaos that you could see, which is some of them show white and some of them show gray. They're gray because in this case, I hadn't run my model yet. As soon as I run the model and I have output, these go white. So again, this is a label on top of the pipe. The label will only show if pipes are showing. Now, it doesn't have to be pipes showing in that specific uh, layer. It could be pipes shown in a lower layer, but as long as the pipe is shown, then the label uh, will show, unless, of course, you tell it not to which is this area show and hide labels. Um, you can tell which pipes or junctions the software should have labels associated with it. Again, this will all, this is like drinking from a fire hose. This is an intro. I don't expect you all, I expect maybe you retain 15%. And if you just understand that not to be overwhelmed, then I've done my job. So don't worry if you don't quite understand everything. We'll go through the example, which should, which should help solidify it more. And then you will practice on your own when you get the new version. Okay, so those were the layer settings. Now, let's put it all together and let's pretend we're making a layer. So here I have a completely fresh instance of our software where there have been no added layers yet. So, well, I guess, sorry, I guess I'm gonna walk through making a layer. The all objects layer is already made all the time. Forever and ever, you will always have this because we need something to, you know, initialize the model making process. So this is made for you. It has limited changes you can make because it's a very special kind of layer, which is a note we'll go through. But the first thing you do to add your own layer is press the plus. Plus usually means add. It's like adding a layer. So you're adding it, and that's what I made down here, is I, I added something and I called it new layer, sweet. Then I open the settings, which is done with that gearbox, no longer imaginary, but you can see it here. And then it opens that settings window, which were the previous slides, okay? And that's where you define your pipes and junctions to show the parameters of output or input and any annotations, which are like text boxes, to show on that layer. Then you close the settings. And then you show and hide the layer to see what effect it has. That's just kind of a, again, part of playing with it is, well, what happened? What do I do? Or like, what happened when I did this? Okay. So some special notes. The all objects layer, again, has limited edits you can make, but you can, if you get lost, like you make a bunch of layers and you don't even know what the heck is actually in your model because you are hiding things in other layers and whatnot. If you press this show all objects button, it will turn off all your other layers and show you the all objects layer. It's a way to get back home effectively. The pencil is another thing I hadn't brought up. This indicates that whether what you draw on the workspace will be added to that layer or not. So right now this pencil is on. If I drag something onto the workspace, like I have a pump, and then I put that on the workspace, because I have this pencil checked, it will be attached to this layer, meaning it will show in the layer. If I have that unchecked, then it will not show in this layer, but because I would have the all objects uh, pencil on, it will be in there. This pencil cannot be toggled on or off with all objects because that's kind of the point of the layer is it has to have all objects, so it's always gonna be showing. And then color maps are a special kind of layer. They 
do not allow you to have multiple active at once because, well, it, it just makes logical sense. If you had you know, multiple colors overlaid on one another, it's like, well, which one are you really looking at? So we limit it to just one color at a time, not one color, but one color map at a time. And then finally, you can save all of these combinations and settings you have for these layers, meaning whether they're shown or not and, and whatnot. You can save that as like a snapshot that we call presets. So if you have a bunch of layers and only you know, half of them are showing, you can, you can save that combination as a preset and then load the preset later. Again, this will make a little more sense with our uh, example. So let's go in. When I first launch, in this case, for this webinar, I'm using Fathom 13, and I'm using Fathom because that's our most common software. It's uh, it, the same ideas apply to all of the other softwares. When I launch Fathom, oh, let's see, there we go. The first thing you will notice is that we have this welcome to Fathom 13 new features window. This is a new thing we're doing and I highly recommend reading through because that is where you will get information on what layers are, what other new new features we've added, right? So I would highly recommend you get into this. Okay, now let's see. Uh, whoops, yes, okay. So that's what it looks like when you first launch it. Then I open the software and I built this model. It looks the exact same as you would have seen before. There's nothing crazy different. Okay, I would still build a model all the same, define the fluid, all of that. And so as I, I dragged and I made all of these, the system, it was the same as any other version. I think it's kind of funny. This represents a fire water system and this webinar is not unlike drinking from a fire hose. So makes sense, I guess. What I want to do though, is I want to display output on my workspace. So it used to be done in visual report. You will now see visual report no longer exists. Okay, remember the sad face, Aww. but it's actually a good thing. So let's turn that frown upside down because workspace layers are really nice. So I want to show output. But the thing is there's so many pipes here, little pipes that it's gonna get really hectic. And it's gonna be really gross really quickly because what would happen is I would show output on every little pipe that exists, every branch, every spray, all of that. And maybe in this case, I actually only care about the main flow paths going into these rooms. So I care about, let's say that flow path and this flow path. And I kind of think about all of these rooms as a cluster. So I want to include them for my hydraulic calculations but I don't necessarily want to see them on reports. So that's where layers can come into play. I'm gonna create a child uh, just for good organization. I'm just gonna call it original pressure supply. So we're supplying this with 40 pounds of pressure. This could represent the discharge of a, of a pump, you could say. Okay, so if I want to only show the main flow paths, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight the path the, sorry, I'm gonna highlight the various paths that I do want to show in a layer. So I'm gonna click through and choose all of these pipes that represent the major flow paths. There we go. And junctions, because I do want to show the junctions for my own sake. Okay, let's see, I selected them all. Excellent. Now, this is when I go into my workspace layers area. Okay, so again, no need to be overwhelmed. This is the, the cap, the QAP, workspace layers. And then here is where I will do all my defining of layers. So I'm going to add one, new layer. I'm going to say either it's a blank layer or it's going to use the things that I've selected on the workspace, which that's why I select on the workspace so I can do this. So I'm going to say from workspace workspace selection, I'm going to create this layer and I'm going to call it main flow paths. Cool. Now, that just made a layer, okay? No need to, no need to worry. What this looks like 
It, so nothing looks different to you. And that's because I still have my all objects layer activated and that has all of my pipes showing. So if I hide this layer, then I am left with just the main flow areas because that is what's in this layer that is showing. The other layer is not showing. So cool, I've got a simplified model now, thank goodness. Now I will go into the settings to show you what happened. If I go into these settings, you will see that only some of my pipes have the all seeing eye. And those are the pipes that show in this layer. Very good, okay. Now if we look at pipe parameters, which is deciding what shows on the pipe or junction, and you can see that over here, which is what uh, displays what's showing, I have pipe number and workspace symbols. Those are just the defaults because that's normally what happens in Fathom when you make a model is we have the junction IDs, or sorry, pipe IDs, pipe numbers, and the workspace symbols, which again are these, uh, these this like ampersand is an example of one. So those are showing. If I were to remove them, so I highlight them and I say remove, do you see that all of my pipes now no longer have any IDs? My junctions do, but my pipes don't. So I want to add them back though. I'm going to go number and I double click it to add it. And I'm going to do symbols. Whoop. Yay. And now in real time, it added them back. Say cool. All right. So similar with junctions. So junctions have these by default. And then show and hide labels. This is can get a little confusing. But that's what the tooltips are for. Remember, tooltips are your friend. We made them for a reason. Uh, it's wigging out while I'm recording. No worries. So read them. This one, really what this means is it makes these pipes be the same as what you have as what's showing. You could disconnect them and say show labels on every pipe, which would be just fine. But by default, we force only showing the labels on the pipes that are showing. Now, if you uncheck them and you do show on pipes that aren't showing in the main area, they can still uh, show up because I might have those pipes and junctions showing in a lower layer. So it's not, they don't only show up if it's in this layer, it shows up if they're in any layer. But again, that's, uh, this concept just takes playing with. This one was something that I don't think anyone could have explained to me. I just had to play and see what what was going on. But by default, this is checked so that I'm only showing labels on objects that are showing. Maybe that's just the easy way to end it. Okay, cool. So that's pretty neat. Now what I want to do though, like I said, is I, I do want to show results. So I guess before getting too ahead of ourselves, what I want to do is I'm gonna draw an annotation to represent our rooms. And this is gonna be a good intro into how annotations have changed. So annotations are like a text box that you can put on your um, in your model. And it makes sense that these would be a part of layers because they can be in front or back or what have you. But the way we do it has changed in the new versions. So you will see that as I place this annotation, we now have all of the settings in the, in the cap over here. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it rooms and the text that I want to show is going to be room A. I want the text to be in the center of my text box. Text block. Yep. I'm going to make the text. I don't know. Let's make it, let's make it some big stuff. I don't know. 36. Why not? Now I need to change my color to transparent and my text to show. So you'll get used to the settings. It's a bit of a change, but uh, they, it, for the most part is still intuitive. You just go through and you kind of read them. So anyway, this represents room A. Yes, yes, everyone says yes, resounding yes. Now I'm gonna place that annotation. I'm gonna call this one room B. And then this one, room C. Oh, paste. And room 
F. So for those who are non-native English speakers, this would be the first six letters of the English alphabet. Okay, so if you recall, I simplified our model, but I still, I still want to tell myself and anybody who would be reading this report that these represent rooms. So the flow isn't just going nowhere, it's going to a room. Now, something that is kind of odd that you have to get used to is even though I'm not showing all of the branches, they do exist. So if I go through and I highlight, let's just highlight this area. Do you see how I have, those things are highlighted now? Because they exist, they're just not showing. So that is where you have to be very careful when it comes to you hiding things and then moving stuff around. Because for certain, you're gonna accidentally move this stuff without really realizing it. You will realize it uh, because it will, you might realize it because it highlights you know, the object, it just is blank, so it's a little odd. This is where the lock feature comes in. So what I do is I select it all, select A, and I do the lock because I don't want to accidentally move stuff. I want to keep it where it was. So that's what locking does. Okay, sweet. But again, I, the ultimate goal is I want to show output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer. This time it's going to be a blank layer because it's not, this layer is no longer about me showing pipes or junctions. This is all about me showing labels. So I'm going to call this flow and pressure output. Okay, so again, my pencils are on. In this case, I'm gonna turn my pencil off so that if I add things, I don't want it to show in this la layer because this layer has no objects shown, just labels. So if I open it, because it was a blank layer, you know, nothing is on. It is a completely blank transparency. What I uh, want to do is I want to not show, I wanna not show any pipes or junctions because I'm already showing them in my main flow paths. This is part of that customization and separating things out. I'm already showing things in my main flow path, so I don't want to show them in this layer, in this example. But what I do want to show are labels. So in my pipe parameters, I want to show, let's do volumetric flow rate, and let's do pressure static inlet, which I can change my units to pressure uh, gauge. Okay, and junctions, I don't need to show anything, that's okay. Now, to show or hide labels, this is where I wanna uncheck the box because if it's checked, do you see how there's nothing here? That's because I'm not showing anything here. I wanna uncheck them and I want to show output on all pipes. But do you see, even though I selected all pipes that completely exist in the model, it's still only showing the ones that are displayed. And it's because it's reading that the bottom layer, all objects is off, the middle layer, main flow path is on, and so it's only applying labels to the layer that's on, which is main flow path. Okay, say close, neat. So now, uh-oh, I locked my objects so I can't, can't move my uh, labels. So we gotta unlock them. Don't worry, this was all planned. So the idea of moving labels, if you're used to visual report, well, that's nothing new. Same idea, but again, now it's just on the workspace. So just moving them around, making it a little easier to read. You know what I might do? I might increase the font, which is done in this area. Do, do, maybe do a couple of them, boom. Okay, sweet, so now I get to see Output, oh man, move that. Yeah, move this one, okay. Okay, so now I only see, so you gotta be careful about the hidden objects, which is why now I'm just gonna lock it. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm only seeing output from the relevant pipes. Now something that's cool again is I want to practice hiding and showing the layers, because I told you all that is the way to do it. So. Maybe if I turn off my main flow paths, what is gonna happen? No, that means no objects and no layers are gonna be shown because the one that is shown 
doesn't have any objects of its own. It only leverages objects from another layer. So I turn off main flow path, it's all gone. If I turn on all objects layer, then everything is shown. And this is where you get the really gross output I was talking about that I was worried about. And you can see down here that I uh, accidentally moved a pipe. So again, it's uh, just something to watch out for. Okay, that's why locking is useful. So this is, I wanted to avoid this, which is why I made this intermediary layer to begin with. Okay, now I wanna add a color map. That's a new layer. I'm gonna do add new layer, color map. I'm gonna call this uh, low flow detection, like we're detectives. So a color map, again, is a separate type of layer, but it's still a layer, you know, like the others. So the idea is you make the layer, go into settings, and then you configure it. This window you haven't seen before, but is very similar in idea to the visual report color map settings. So the first thing I want to do is decide what parameter do I want to be colored. And in this case, I want volumetric flow rate in gallons per minute. And I'm only going to have, I only want two thresholds. Okay. So what this means is that anything above 300 and 60 will be red. Let's see if we got any of those. We do. And anything below that but above 13 is going to be blue. So it, it just created these, you know, based on the min and max values, and it just cut right in the middle, <laughs> pretty much. So that's just the automatic version. You can change this. So I want actually anything that is above 70 gallons per minute, I want that to be green, meaning it's good. Anything that is going to be actually greater than or equal to. Anything that is less than 70, I want that to be red because that's by it. So I choose the colors, I choose my thresholds. And now what I want to do is I want to color both pipes and labels so that it's really obvious to the eye, to the human eye. Now, because this layer is on and I did my color map, what you see is that any pipe that had lower than 70 gallons per minute is red, which happens to be two out of our, or sorry, four out of our six rooms. This one, well, it has a lot more than 70 because it's a much bigger room, but again, I'm just showing you an example. So everything else is green though, because it's all above 70. So the point of this model, the story behind it is I have a certain flow rate I need to meet for these rooms and I'm not meeting them, but I got to see it uh, sorry, I get to see the problems easily. I can see right now where my problem exists is what I'm trying to say. I can toggle off that layer and no colors show and there's no legend. Now this legend I will say is a little small for my taste. I want the text to be bigger. So that's where I go into these global settings here. And I have only a few options. Again, you can just read through them. They're not nothing terribly crazy, but you have your legend size. So I'm gonna change that to be, I think like 24 is probably good. Yeah, it looks good. And then another option over here is that I can, instead of showing all of the units in the label, cause that looks kind of messy. I mean, look how many times PSI is, is repeated. Instead of putting them in the label, I wanna put them in a legend. And that's what that checkbox does. So personally, this is my preference so that I clean up my model. And now I just have labels. So when it Q, that's flow rate equals 56, I know it's gallons per minute from this legend. It just kind of cleans it up again. So you don't have to do that, of course. Sweet. But the point of this example again, oh, let me, I'm gonna save this as a, I'm gonna do final, final fire water. There we go. Always save, it's a habit I learned. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna clone this uh, without children, there's no ch uh, children anyway. Let's say, and I'm gonna say, well, I think we need a bigger pump or something. 
So I'm going to investigate what it looks like if I supply with 60 pounds of pressure instead. And then see how everything was cleared out because by changing the input, my output has cleared. I have nothing, I have no calculations. And if I run this bad boy, control R, because I'm a, sh a shortcut kind of guy, and I now go to workspace that shows up in my solution progress. Hey, my color map is back. My values are back. Not only are they back, they're back and better than ever because, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. My flow, I, sorry, I'm getting used to the Zoom tool, is now everything is above 70. Excellent. That is exactly what I wanted. Everything's above 70 gallons per minute. Everything is green. This is a safer design. So now I can take this information and say, well, whatever we do, we need a pump that at least gives us six, you know, around 60. Of course, you can play with that number and iterate on it, but that's not the point of this webinar. <clears throat> So using the same layers, I just made a new scenario and quickly saw that everything's fine now. Let's say I want to go back into my base scenario, though. And I like the idea of my base scenario just being, so again, if I press this button, show all objects, what that does is it turns these eyes off and it shows the bottom one only. So show all objects, I'm going to turn off the color map. And this, though, is a little gross right now because it's overlaying all of my pipes and annotations and i cannot i can't alter that so that's part of this special layer settings i was talking about this one has limited edits i cannot tell it to not show it because this is the point of the layer is to show everything so what i can do though instead is i can right click and i can duplicate it and i'm going to call it all objects no annotations, please. No annotations, because that does, is not helpful right now. I move it down just to get it next to this all objects layer. And what I'm going to do is I am going to check the settings. So it's going to show all of my pipes and branches. Good, because that's what this layer was doing. And only showing number and symbols like defaults do. But in this case, I'm going to turn off all my annotations. Okay, now if I turn off my all objects layer, ah, I, I, sorry. So, well, it's a good learning experience, I guess. So do you see how I have all of these pipes showing? And I also have pipe numbers and, and workspace symbols supposed to be showing, but they're not. Why? Well, that's because I didn't say to show or hide label. I didn't tell it to look to have it on all of them. So. I'm going to do this and I'm going to just kind of reset it. Okay, so now this looks like my original model. This was the original thing I built with no annotations. If I want to see the annotations, I just use the other layer. Now, what's really cool is making presets. That is, again, what happens. Uh, well, let's say, so if I go into, let's go into my original pressure supply. And do you recall that what I wanted to see with that was I wanted the color map, I wanted my output, and I only wanted the main flow paths though. This, this, this right here. I can save this snapshot as what we call a preset. I'm going to save this and call it mm, simplified flow. Uh, results maybe. So that if I nuke everything or not. It, but you know what I mean, where I turn everything off and it's like, oh, uh, you can quickly get back to that view by double clicking or pressing load. Woo, there we go. Now you can imagine how handy this is if you have many layers. <clears throat> so uh, that's the preset. You can change the preset if you want. Let's say I don't want to show output anymore. Oh, sorry. Uh, whoops, whoops. I don't want to show output. I just want the colors. Then you can redo these this configuration and then say update now if i reload it it's updated that way in this case though i want to re-update it with the output i like the output so you can load it update it or link to a scenario what that means is if i link it again use the tooltips okay but if i link it what this means is that anytime i load up this scenario it will show this view every time. So it's linked, that's really nice. 
So if I go, let's say base scenario, and this one is just gonna be, let's just do all objects. Okay, and I go down to this scenario, it knows the preset is linked to it, which is really nice. What I wanna do with the base scenario though is link a different preset because I don't, in the base scenario, I just wanna see everything but without the annotations. So I want the base scenario to look like this. I'm gonna make a preset with these settings. I'm gonna say preset, I'm gonna say all objects without anodes. So, and link that one to my base scenario. So I'm gonna link it here, link it to my base. Oh, come on, there we go. So that anytime I load my base, it's the full view. Anytime I load my test scenarios, which would be these two, it will show my other preset. So again, base scenario defaults to this view. This scenario is gonna default to this other one and then higher pressure supply, I can do a similar thing where I'm gonna link the uh, simplified flow results, which is the color map and all that. So again, the result of all of this is I can go into original supply. Oh, those are ones that were red. My base scenario gives me an overview of the entire model. And again, you're not stuck to that, right? I can still, within the scenario, decide what to show and what not to show, but the preset is just a, a nice saving point. Whew, okay. So you guys are all masters, right? Okay. So yes, a good point with this because I haven't done that is you can show input and output together. So that is different than visual report. That is a great question to ask. So here we have pipe parameters. We have flow rate and pressure are all output. Well, let's say we wanna look at nominal size of the pipes. Cool, that's also, that's input. So now you can see output and input together which is an upgrade from visual report, which made you, which forced you to choose one or the other. Very good. So I'm gonna go back and, and undo it just because I, for the sake of the example, I'm gonna save this. And then we're gonna go into really what was the point of this webinar. It's really funny. The point of this webinar was to explain to you what happens to your old visual reports when from an old version, when you bring it in to a new version. But I need to tell you all of these foundations so you understand what the heck I'm talking about when I do tell you what happens to old versions. So now that that's over with, we'll go into what happens to a previously saved model. And this will take just a matter of minutes because really understanding layers is the big portion. Understanding what happens to an old model is actually relatively easy. So I'm gonna minimize this and what I have now, you gotta switch your brain, this is now Fathom 12 or an older version, let's say, that does not have layers, no layers, okay? This is an old model that I have saved. It has a visual report because older versions had visual report. Each scenario I have though is a different one. And that's gonna be kind of interesting when we bring that into the new versions. So. This scenario, original pump curve has a lot, right? It has my pressures, my velocities, flow rate, has pump output, valve output, whatnot. If I go into another scenario, it has a completely different visual report. My pumps all are all very similar, but when I go to this one, which is a different uh, setup, different type of pump, or it doesn't have a pump curve, and I'm only showing now valve and heat exchanger output. The point is I have a single model file with multiple scenarios and multiple types of visual reports. This has no color map, right? This one does. So the question is, what happens if I bring this into Fathom 13? It's a very important question. Um, I, I know there are engineers that don't like bringing old models forward because you know you wanna stay within a project, but sometimes, uh, especially if it's an, you know, an ongoing system that you're constantly analyzing, you have to bring it forward. So what happens, let's do this. Now I'm in Fathom 13, okay? Now it's a completely blank Fathom 13 though. What happens is I can bring in my older model. So I'm gonna go to file, 
open. Let me see if I can get that one. And I'm going to do my live new cooling water example, which is that Fathom 12 file. This says Fathom 13, but you can ignore that. That's just the way you know Windows reads it. It's it was saved with Fathom 12. Cool. Now, do you see? Let's let's go back to the workspace. Do you see how it is the same? Yes, because there really hasn't been that much that's changed when you first open it. That's how we get you when you first open it. If you go to visual report, uh-oh, it's all gone. And it directs you to click here to view layer settings. Okay, sweet. And oh, close that. Uh, let's do this. We need to go to, if you try to save this model, save as, you get this warning. Model was created before workspace layers were introduced. So what we're trying to do is before you save it without any layer info, because right now you have very little, we warn you and say, well, do you want to import your old visual reports as layers? And the answer is usually yes. Otherwise, you just make everything from scratch, which might not be the end of the world. But if you put a lot of work into your visual reports, maybe you don't want to do that. So I say yes. And then you get this layers import assistant. And you read because that's what good engineers do, right? You read. So we this just describes what's going on. Uh, really, the idea is you use this tool when you have kind of special visual reports across multiple scenarios because you want to keep that nice organization you had. And I click next. And now I get to choose which scenarios and their visual reports do I want to bring in. Well, I want to bring in these five. Okay, and remember, they're all different. Next. And what it tells you is it gives you a summary. Oh, oh, whoops, hold on. I'm sorry, I'm, I, I, have, I have to, we got to redo this. Don't worry, and this didn't happen. Oops. Okay, we're gonna do this again. But I don't have to give as much explanation, which is nice. A better way to go through this process is you do see a little pop-up here that tells you before you even try to save as. The save as process is a little, uh, just a little different. So forgive me, also a lot of the stuff is in beta currently, but this is really the way you would want to import your layers. It, get, it will bring you through the same process. So I'm sorry for that confusion, but this gives you the same sort of message. And I press layers import assistance, and then now we're back to normal, okay? And again, we have unique visual reports. Okay, I wanna choose all five of these. Well, five, not the top one. Say next. And now what it tells me is that I have uh, 10 layers to bring in which is five standard layers, which would be workspace layers, and then five visual report layers. That makes sense though, right? Because there are uh, five scenarios and each one has its own visual report. So there's 10 total layers. And with that then will come five total presets because there's five scenarios. Now there should be a color map importing. And to be frank, I'm not sure why. I think I messed something up maybe when I saved my Fathom 12. So I apologize, but this would be one. Let's just pretend that's one because it's going to bring in your color map from the previous version as well, because that was the point of this example. Now I import them. Very nice. And what I see down here is a whole bunch of layers. Don't get overwhelmed. Each one is attached to a scenario. So if you see, like my pump A scenarios have two, my pump B scenarios have two. And this is how we got the 10 total. We have other layers here imported as well, but they were unrelated to my visual report. This is just kind of what, how we decided to bring in Fathom 12 generally, not necessarily uh, with the visual report assistant import. So there is a lot. Remember there were 10 that were brought in. What's really nice though, is that the pre, oh, if I run the model, so I have to file batch run. I'm gonna run all of these as soon as I get output, then I can show you the labels. Very nice. Okay, 
So now what it did was it it linked the preset based on the uh, the layers that were appropriate to that scenario. So original pump curve, remember, had all of the output, had like everything. Then if we just go into individual pumps, pumps just had their own pump output. Okay, and then no curves, had no pump output, and just valves and heat exchangers. So it brought in and linked those presets to the appropriate scenarios, very similar to how they would have been saved in visual report. Okay, now again, there would be a color map here. I think I would have, I think I actually messed something up, but there is a color map that would be important. And you can see that each time I load a scenario, I have a different preset linked, and that's what this is showing, this slight blue highlighting. And of course, you can change that preset. Like if you don't want, if you don't want this, you don't like that this always shows, well, you can turn off that portion by doing the shutting off this visual report and then updating this one. Okay, so you remember you guys still gotta match what scenario and what layer, what preset, but if you don't like the chaos so in this case these labels stay but the original pump curve labels don't if you don't like the chaos you just find where it's at and turn it off in this case i do like the chaos that's who i am okay so this is how you can bring in an old visual report into the new version of the software and now i'm free to save it as call it fathom 13. boom now forever and ever it will be a fathom 13 model at least this copy, the other Fathom 12 was, you know, will stay the same. That concludes, that's, like I said, a lot of information, but no need to fear because we have resources. So we do have a help site, which is online, which means it's searchable and eventually, you know, Google-able when we get the CEO up, not CEO, SEO up. And this is just from the perspective of Fathom, because remember, it applies to all software, but uh, Fathom's most common, so that's what, what I have here. But you can imagine the same topic of workspace layers exists in many, uh, in all of the other softwares. So all I did was click that link, and again, you can search this title, workspace layers, in the search bar, and you will see a, dis a more thorough description of what's going on. So that's just one resource. And again, you don't have this yet, not yet. Those in the future, you have it. Those right now don't have it. Just watch out for it. We have a blog on it, which you do have access to, which is called How to Use AFT Workspace Layers. Again, this one you can Google and it will come up. You don't need the hyperlink, but we do have a um, link to it. Sometimes blogs are nice because they're a little more informal. It's you know different than the help site documentation. And we have another webinar on layers with the title being layers, a cool new way of preparing the visual report. Okay, well, that is pretty much right on time. Looks like all questions got answered. So of course you're probably, you're going to have more, but what I would do if I was you is see what we just went through, maybe watch the recording and just wait until you get Fathom 13 and then really dive into it and then ask questions. It is a lot of fun to play with, but it does take, you know, it just takes practice to really understand what's going on. And as you see, I even fumbled a bit in the layer. So it's not something that's, you know, you're just going to get right away. The process is intuitive. Sometimes like the results can be a little uh, tricky for your brain to wrap, you know, just to wrap your head around it because layers, you can have many layers to things. So. In conclusion, layers are cool. I hope you have fun with them. Thank you so much for attending. And we're always here if you have questions. So I appreciate your time. Take care.